of letters to the British government, to the American ambassador in London, and uh, it seemed as though a lot of people were shaking a lot of trees and, and creating a fuss. Then, suddenly, the story broke that Dr. Afia Siddiqui had been arrested and was being flown to New York. The FBI released the story, and it was a story which just beggars belief. It, it, you, can, you just couldn't make this one up. The Americans wanted us to believe that this tiny, fragile doctor who'd been kidnapped five years earlier, who'd just gone completely off radar, had suddenly appeared with her 12-year-old son in a dazed and confused state outside the governor's office of Gardez in Afghanistan. In her handbag, she had several pieces of bomb-making equipment, she also had pictures of the Empire State Building and therefore was obviously a dangerous terrorist on a mission. She was arrested and six armed Americans arrived to take her away. They walked into the room where one of them apparently was overpowered by this tiny, dazed and confused doctor and she managed to fire a couple of rounds off his gun before it was uh, seized back. She was then shot at close range, having been disarmed. She was shot at close range and sustained injuries, which has cost her a kidney and part of her intestines. She was then taken to Bagram and stitched up by some butcher who calls himself a doctor and was um, presented to the courts in New York as uh, not charged with any terrorism offences, but uh, charged with attempting to kill an American serviceman. I rang up the Pentagon. I was um, in the middle of having a discussion with a Lieutenant Colonel Mark Wright. And I said to him, you denied that 650 existed and now Afia Siddiqui has come and you're giving out this tale which nobody believes. And he started stumbling over his words and he said he would come back. As the case with Afia Siddiqui began to unfold, the, the good news, the only good news out of this shocking story is that her son has now been reunited with his family. We don't know what's happened to the babe in arms that she was carrying the day that she was kidnapped in Karachi. We don't know what's happened to the toddler either. Two of her children have just gone completely off radar. What we also know now, thanks to Moazan, is that 650, prisoner 650 does exist and Lieutenant Colonel Mark Wright called me back and said due to a change in the prison numbering system um, he could now confirm that prisoner 650 did exist. She had spent two years in Bagram and she had been returned to her country of origin. And I said, can I have her name? And he said, no, for national security reasons, I can't give you her name. I said, can you tell me which country she has gone to? And he said, we sent her back to her country of origin. And I said, which country was that? Again, he wouldn't tell me. I said to him, well, now that we've established that there was at least one female prisoner in Bagram, can you tell me how many more there are? I said, I am not suggesting that you are lying, Lieutenant Colonel, but certainly the people who are briefing you are, that your name, along with mine, is going to go on this story. So I suggest you go back to your sources and come back to me. I want to know how many women, well, they don't call them female prisoners, they call them female enemy combatants. I want to know how many female enemy combatants you have in American custody, not just in Bagram and not just in Afghanistan. I want to know how many you have. I'm still waiting for him to come back to me. In fact, I'll be giving him a call tomorrow. 
Now, if there's one thing that I've found out about the Muslim community in the years since I've converted to Islam is that secrets cannot be kept. So I want each and every one of you to contact your families back in Pakistan. We must track down prisoner 650 and any other female who has been held in custody. I was going to say American custody there, but I don't at the moment think that Afia Siddiqui has been held in American custody, but she probably has been held at the request of the Americans. There is a theory, and eventually the truth will come out, there is a theory that she was kidnapped by the Pakistan authorities and sold like a, a slave, like a piece of meat, like the brothers in Guantanamo, to the Americans. Where she has been held for the last five years, I have no idea, but I think that we can all guess that she certainly hasn't been plotting to blow up the Empire State Building, and uh, that is not the reason for her rolling up to the governor's office in Gardez with bomb making equipment in her purse. So there are still lots of questions that remain unanswered. We can't rely on the authorities to tell us the truth. Each and every one of us has to turn detective. Each and every one of us has to go and contact our families and ask our families to contact their families. And eventually we will start to be able to build a picture I am going to Pakistan later this week. I will be speaking at the Jamaat Islami conference. I think there's about 200,000 there, and I will be asking the same of them. And I'm also going to see a brother who has been held in Bagram for some years. And the feedback that I'm getting, although I've yet to speak to him directly, is that there were three or four women prisoners held in Bagram. And the conditions that they were held in were identical to the men. Whenever 650 needed to use the bathroom, there was no privacy, there was no door shut. She had to use the same open toilet as the men in front of the guards. Whenever she wanted to use the shower, or got to use the shower, there was no curtain, there was no privacy, she used the same shower as the men in front of the guards.